In episode one, we thought we learned what vocal cord paralysis is. Everybody thinks if one vocal cord is sitting still and the other is moving, we have vocal cord paralysis. But what I want to tell you is the symptoms of paralysis have nothing to do with the lack of motion. The issue with Peter's symptoms had to do with, number one, he's leaking air. He's having to squeeze super strong just to get the vocal cords closed. Because of that, he fatigues and tires out when he goes to make sound. We also learned that when Peter closes his vocal cords and he puts air pressure under them, this weak side blows out and there's a gap there and the air leaks. And that creates white noise and a poor quality voice. So Peter's problems don't come from the lack of motion. They come because this side is weak and we have an air gap and we have a lot of extra squeeze. Now there's a couple more findings in a paralyzed vocal cord that add to these problems. One is atrophy. When we're actually looking down from above, both of the vocal cords look pretty symmetric. And that's one of the problems doctors have is with this perspective. When you put an endoscope in and you look from above, you think the vocal cords are even, but they're not. Now it's subtle in Peter, but let me see if I can show it to you. If I move my endoscope to where it's angled, I can actually see the body of this vocal cord. That is that this good non-paralyzed vocal cord, because the nerve's still hooked up, it has muscle mass. Now, when you use a muscle, it gets thicker. So if, if I were a bodybuilder and exercising, I'd get a really fat muscle here. I'm not, so I've kind of got a thin one. And if I put my arm in a cast, or I put a bodybuilder's arm in a cast, this would atrophy away to nothing. Well, on Peter, his good cord still has a relatively good mass, and we can see it when we get in an angle. Now, if we change the angle to the other side, and we look at this paralyzed cord, again, the problem's not the motion, it's that this vocal cord is actually very thin. If we watch the strobe of Peter's movement, we can actually see the body of this good side stays there and holds tension throughout every vibration. And if we look at his weak side, when the vocal cord moves out, we actually don't see any mass to this muscle at all on his paralyzed side. So let me show you more obvious in another patient where I anesthetize the vocal cords and I zoom in on it. In this perspective, I'm getting the endoscope lined up right along the length of the vocal cord. And when I'm looking along the length of the vocal cord, it's very apparent how much mass the thyroid muscle has, that is the vocal cord muscle. And when I angle it and use the endoscope to look along the other side, I can see how thin and scooped out this lack of muscle mass is. So compare this thick side to this thin side, and that'll actually lead us to how we're gonna correct this problem. This wimpy cord, we can put a shim in to thicken it up and give it the same mass and bulk as the other side. So this leads us to how we're gonna fix the problem. Let's look at one more finding of air leak. We can see this air leak during a strobe exam. And if I look through this very slowly and go frame by frame, what we'll see is that the vocal cords never actually come together. They open and they close, but in the center of the vocal cords, there is always a continuous leak of air. If we can increase the bulk on this weak side, then the vocal cords are going to close. We'll put the implant in and take a look at his videos again after the implant and we'll compare the before and after. When Peter brings his good vocal cord to the midline, the weak one, because it has a shim behind it, no longer buckles out and so we no longer have as big a gap of air coming out. Here's before, here's our gap, here's after, and we've improved the closure. So now it's not taking as much air for Peter to talk. Look at all the effort Peter is putting in to getting this pitch, where after we put an implant or a shim in here, he's able to bring them together 
without a lot less effort. So he's going to be a lot less tired with speaking. And when Peter goes to make a sound, we're going to find that if we've bulked up his muscle artificially with a shim, that air doesn't come out between the vocal cords. If we take a look at his before, and we go frame by frame, his vocal cords never come closed. And so he can't get very loud because he's losing so much air. Now, after I put the implant in, the vocal cords come completely closed in the middle. And in fact, if I count the frames, one, two, three, or five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, now they're closed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and now they're open again. As the vocal cords are oscillating a hundred times a second, they're now spending half of their time closed and half open, where before this was bulked up, they were spending all the time open and there was a continuous leak of air. Let me tell you what Peter says one day after surgery. My biggest gain is that I've stopped choking on water. I didn't realize I was choking all the time and now I can drink without even thinking about it. I'm much less out of breath, whether it's with activity or talking. I don't run out of air as quickly. And I've been on the phone with my friends and they think they're talking to my son. My voice sounds more youthful and robust and my pitch is lower and the change is dramatic. Well, what do we learn from all this? That the lack of motion really has nothing to do with the problem of paralysis. The problem of paralysis has to do with the fact that the vocal cords are a valve and if you can't close the valve, you have a set of problems. Peter's comment about the water going down the wrong way, he can now close the valve and water doesn't go down the wrong way. His comment about not running out of air is because when he can close the valve, he can keep his lungs much more filled with air. And his comment about his youthful voice has to do with the fact he doesn't have to pull the vocal cords tight so he no longer sounds like a frail old man. So we can ignore the movement issue. What we're looking for is air leak. And if we fix that problem, in this case by putting a shim in, we improve the valve. If you'd like more information about vocal cord paralysis or other voice issues, stop by voicedoctor.net. Yeah, so if your doctor said you have vocal cord paralysis, what would you expect your voice to be? Oh, it would sound like I couldn't talk. Like, just guess. There would just be a lot of air coming out, but no definitive sound. Is that correct? Well, tell us the right <laughs> the correct answer.